diesel prices are rising, aren't they? Are you seeing it where you're at too? Tell me where you're at. What's the price of diesel where you're at? Make sure to include if that price is for gallons or liters. I just want to point out that on my ride into work, the construction that has been here all winter has been completed. And most, oh wait, there's some more up here yet. Well, they've removed almost all of the one lane traffic here and that traffic is moving smoothly on that side now. Thank God. And on schedule, I am very impressed. Good job. Now I gotta admit, those, those new Volvos are pretty nice. They're comfortable, we'll say that. I'm more of a Kenworth Peterbilt guy myself, but these Volvos are nice for on the highway. It's like a little mini motel room. Actually pretty nice. This is sort of more my style. But, depends how important comfort is to you, right? We got options here. Time to get her started up and uh, ready to go. I fueled her up last week. Uh, I believe I filmed that, right? We put about a thousand dollars in there again. Uh, 800 and some liters. The price of diesel here, last I checked when I filled up last week, was $1.30 per liter. So uh, it, around this area, it's, it's sort of stayed around there, that level for the last several months. Uh, my topic of discussion for today's video with the rising diesel prices comes from Transportation Nation Network. Uh, they posted an article about the rising diesel prices in the U.S that overall it's gone up uh, in some areas over a dollar per gallon in just the last couple of months. So it's been a big jump for them down there. Uh, that's why I ask, what's diesel prices like where you are? Uh, let me know where that is in the world. And has it been steadily rising? Has it sort of been plateaued for a while? Has it been spiking up or has it actually gone down? I sort of want to see how things are around the world. Today's mission requires a 53-foot box, a closed-in box, also known as a van trailer. Oh, 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 I just barely gave myself enough room here. Oh, <laughs> like a boss. So we've got a lot of boxes and stuff in here, and this is all going to uh, Fairford, Manitoba. It's uh, a little bit of a drive straight north of Highway 6 in Manitoba. I'm guessing maybe a three hour drive? We'll find out in a bit. Now when you see this on the back of the trailer, look up. It's not telling you to look up at the sky. It's telling you to look up to make sure that the upper latches are latched in. Same with the bottom latches here. And also make sure your uh, marker lights are working. I'm gonna go turn them on now because it always helps when they're on. If you're trying to check to see if your lights work, it works better if you turn them on first. Let's turn them on. Dun, dun, dun. I'm gonna use my fancy device here to check the brake light. Gonna hold those trailer brakes down. So right now, I've spiked the trailer, which means these brakes are engaged. But not the parking brakes, just the, the handbrake. That'll turn the, the brake lights on back here. So it's working. Now you can see signals are both working, brake lights are working, marker lights are working. Okay. License plate light. Check that. It's working. Okay. We check the other side as we were walking this way. We have checked the tires to make sure they're filled with uh, premium autumn air. Lights are working. And just the marker lights at the front here yet. further back so you can see them tiny little orange amber lights up there they're working all the lights in the truck are working we're ready to rock and roll we're going to Fairford Manitoba Pine Muntang First Nation they need me and I'm on the way 
Okie dokie. To the north. Up Highway 6. We're already on the west side of Winnipeg here right now. And if you're new, don't forget to subscribe. Winnipeg is the capital of, pro of the province of Manitoba in Canada. It's located straight north of I-29. Uh, so we're just north of western North Dakota and eastern Minnesota. We're about, uh, let's say about 100 and, uh, 120 miles, 150 miles north of the border. And we're gonna head further north into Canada from here. So we've arrived up here to Pine Moon Tang. It's spelt on the sign right there. Pine Moon Tang. No, Pine Mu Tang. No N in there. Pine Mu Tang. Pine Mu Tang. It's uh, it's a First Nation uh, reserve. So this is their store here. That's their arena over there. Their band office is just down the road there. And I'm waiting here for. Uh, uh, some representatives from the place where I picked this up from they're coming to help uh, I don't know if they're helping with unloading or if they they've just got paperwork But I'm supposed to meet them here anyways They're coming here from Winnipeg and we're all gonna meet here And then I'm gonna go down the road over there towards the band office and apparently there's a warehouse around the corner over there And we're gonna unload all of this uh, there I don't know if uh, I'm supposed to help with the offloading if they need my help of course I'll, I'll give them a hand and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see what happens from there. Right now, I don't really know what's going on. Uh, I'm going to be waiting here for about 30 minutes, waiting for those reps to get up here and give me whatever paperwork or, or whatever I'm supposed to get. They told me just don't open the doors until they get here, so I'm just doing what I'm told. If you're wondering what gas prices are like up here, they're the same as down south in Steinbeck. Well, this is $1.32.9. I think in Steinbeck, it was $1.30.9, right? Which sort of makes sense. It's a little bit more expensive the further north you go, the further away from uh, the city you get. You gotta, it's just the extra cost of getting the fuel up here, is what I'm, what I'm assuming. But uh, yeah, we're just sitting around here. We're gonna wait for uh, those people to meet, meet us, and uh, go from there. It's really nice countryside up here. It's really nice. Those leaves are falling so fast already. So that article I was talking about this morning about diesel prices jump, it's it's right here. Uh, it's a few days old already by the time you're watching this. But I am curious to see uh, what your experiences are out there as well. Uh, you can find this article on transportationnation.com on their website. Let's see if it allows me to pull it up here. My phone's been acting really weird lately. Has any of your phones been acting weird too? Like my... Like, I know Facebook had that blackout for a day, a couple of days ago, but now my links aren't working. I can't get into any of these stories and stuff. Like they said, just in, diesel prices jump again and now set at the highest level since 2014. Okay, I've got the article pulled up here now. I had to go to their website. It, for some reason, my phone doesn't like to click links that direct me to websites. Ah, uh, it's probably, uh, probably just my phone. So, from Washington, D.C., the national average price for on-highway diesel saw its largest weekly jump in months last week and sits at the highest point since 2014. According to the U.S. Department of Energy's latest weekly report, the national average price for diesel for the week ending October 4th rose an eye-popping 7.1 cents to 3.48 a gallon. I'm rounding up to the nearest cent. From the week before, which was 340 a gallon. Thanks. The national average price for diesel is up a dollar and nine cents from the same time last year. That's crazy. Oh, I got a bee on me here. I got, I got attacked by a hornet. That was close. He landed right on me. I was about to swat him away like a fly. Like, oh, my apologies, good sir. I will give you the respect you deserve with a stinger like you have. And I gently guided him out of my truck. Mm, bees. So what was I saying? So 
It's now it, the, the diesel price in the U.S. now sits at its highest point since the week of December 8th, 2014, when it was at $3.54 a gallon. The Midwest saw the highest price rise, a whopping 10.4 cents a gallon since the same time in the last in the last year or in, since 20, since 2014 right you guys can go read the article for yourselves i want to send you i don't want to read the whole article for you and uh you can uh, read it for yourselves there but my my point of this topic of conversation today is to see where you guys are in the world in canada we haven't seen the same spike recently in diesel prices it, it did go up but it's been sort of plateaued now at about $1.30 per liter, which is expensive for us in Canada. We have a large country and we travel large distances. We're used to having a little bit of a cheaper uh, fuel cost. Uh, whereas in Europe, you know, you guys don't drive as far. You know, from here to Alberta is just two provinces over for me. That's just a small part of our country. The same distance to you would be from, you know, like London, England to, you know, the southern tip of Germany or something or Italy. Uh, I don't know how Europe works, but... Uh, I understand your fuel prices are different there, but I'm not talking about where the fuel price is at, really. Have you seen it rise and spike recently? This must be an American thing at the time because ours did spike, but ours was earlier and ours sort of plateaued now, but the U.S. is seeing a huge rise. How about you guys in Europe? How about Australia? How's your diesel prices doing over there? Any other parts of the world that I'm not mentioning? Uh, what's your diesel prices at? Uh, what uh, is it liters or gallons? I'm very curious to see if this is like a worldwide phenomenon or if it's localized more to just the U.S. right now. Because the U.S. still has cheaper fuel than anywhere else that I know of in the world. Their fuel is still way cheaper. We pay $1.30 per liter for, for fuel. They're paying about like 75, 80 cents per liter. So they're paying way less for fuel than us. So U.S. has nowhere near expensive fuel yet according to our standards. <laughs> but you know it is it is rising quickly for them so it's interesting to watch how this will develop and a lot of you have been requesting the joke of the day to return those of you who have been requesting that have been watching my channel for a very long time because way back in the day probably like seven eight years ago i used to do a joke of the day i got a couple for you today okay maybe we'll start bringing this back I got a joke for you right here. Did you hear about the mathematician who's afraid of negative numbers? He'll stop at nothing to avoid them. <coughs> Did you hear about the new restaurant called Karma? There's no menu. You get what you deserve. <laughs> Where are average things manufactured? At the satisfactory. <laughs> How do you drown a hipster? Throw them in the mainstream. <laughs> okay, these are bad. These are bad. <laughs> back on the road. Back on the road again. I have an empty box behind me now. Oh, I'm feeling light as a feather. I actually had to offload the entire trailer, or tailgate it is what it's called. Uh, I'm responsible for the freight until it gets off the trailer. So uh, it's my job to bring the freight to the back of the trailer. So it wasn't that bad. It wasn't that bad. Got a good workout out of it, though. Got a good sweat in. Uh, and now that's all over. I can't film while I'm there. So uh, I'll tell you all about it. We unloaded the trailer. I got all sweaty and worked up. Now I'm going back this way. There you go. You're all filled in. So tell me honestly, what do you think of my jokes? What do you think of my jokes? I'm still kind of chuckling to myself. I love a good dad joke. <laughs> Tune in tomorrow for more. Tune in tomorrow for more. All right, I'm on my way back to the yard right now. We're gonna uh, uh, park this truck, get in the pickup, go home. I have my assignment for tomorrow already. I'm going up to Arbor to pick up some freight going down to the US of A. And don't worry, we're gonna get some more dad jokes ready and lined up for you. Don't worry.
up in my Silverado. Yeah. All right, all right, I'm excited. Let's go home. Let's go to bed so we can do it all over again tomorrow. Except tomorrow we're going to Arbor. Should be fun. I gotta be there bright and early, so. We're gonna be trucking before the sun comes up. Did you have a good day, Diesel? Chevy? You have a good day? You guys missed the Rockstar welcome today. Britt made a very, very special supper today. She said she got a little carried away. Got a little ambitious. So what is it? I took a recipe off Pinterest and tweaked it and made it my own. Added a lot of extras. It's like a chicken potato ranch casserole. I just added extra veggies and stuff. We'll call it the Brittany. Or chicken and potato ranch casserole. Or that, for short. <laughs> for short. <laughs> yeah, see oh, how it's it look good. Yeah, let's, see how it is. Get, get yourself up. a plateful. Well, you made your, it, so you this get is to. Your plate, so. Oh, you're gonna serve me first. You make dinner and serve me first. Okay, it's a little bit watery. At what the a bottom. woman. Probably from the broccoli. That's okay, okay. though. Okay. That means that the leftovers won't dry out, at least. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Oh, this looks so good. Is there uh, crackers in here too? Yeah. Like the other one? Oh, okay. Yeah. This one has potatoes. Oh, potatoes. Looks All delicious. Right. Let's try it out. Mm. 